All right, now to finish off our creature, we've got all our edges fairly clean. It's all on one, one layer here. It's all together, so if I wanted to erase, I can now use a sharper eraser, a little bit more targeted, and fine tune some of these, these edges. And the big problem with digital art is just knowing that you can't get it perfect. You can just zoom in forever and keep on, on working. You have to know kind of what level you're going for. And so we do that with resolution and looking at the big picture here. Let's see. And what I like to do is just hit my edges with a little bit of feathering with a lower opacity eraser. Just a bit, because I know that they're somewhat see-through anyway, these feathers. That's a little too sharp. Let me do it with softer. Kind of let the gray come through a little bit. It also means any environment that I put them in, and that's our next project, is going to be showing through the edges of these feathers as well. The only time I wouldn't do that if it was something other than feathers and fur, like reptile skin or something, I would leave that nice and crisp. But fur and feathers definitely lets light in at the edge. I'm going to soften it out. And a way to do that just generally all over, and a way to help kind of catch some of these edges you might not want, is using a contiguous setting on your magic wand, selecting all the space around it, and you see it will locate for you little areas that can be deleted easily. Just hold down shift, select these in. all the little lines that were left, all the little debris. You want a nice clean edge. Clean space all the way around your creature. Alright, it looks pretty good. I could even add in with the magic wand these little undercut areas they get stuck between. All right, and then what I do is I use Refine Edge, and we've used this before, and I shift the edge in a little bit, and this time I'm going to feather it. Just a few pixels, and that's going to soften those transitions. Feathering just makes the selection softer at the edges. Take some processing. Come on. <laughs> then I say okay. And it's gonna get that edge for me. So let me show you as I zoom in what that looks like. So you see how it chunks it in a little bit and then when I hit delete it softens it. Gives me a nice kind of even softness across the outline. And if there's anywhere I need to touch that up with the eraser, I can do that. Okay, but what this demo really is, this is putting it all together, right? Getting it all finished. It's using the final clone stamp layer. Merging all layers together. Using a pressure sensitive brush. So that I can really place some of these
these disparate objects and textures all into the same world. Especially looking at where edges come together, where things overlap. Maybe take a little bit of that and put that darkness down here. Maybe a little of that blue. This is very subjective. <laughs> you want to change your target up a lot, and that's why I do it at a low opacity too, so it's not always looking the exact same. can't burn these legs down enough. And you can also use it to soften some edges. So clone stamp, little green edge there. I just bite into it with my clone stamp. Any hard edges, I can soften and transition using this. I want this feather texture to impact just a little bit of the other feather texture. I just paint it in at a low opacity. And vice versa. This is the final coat of paint. You can always do commands here, go back in your history if you think you've gone it too far in some area. I love these colors here, but if I use them too much, it will look very copy pasted. So I'll be strategic about where I put those. And I love how these new versions of Photoshop kind of previews what you're painting before it, you actually paint it. Now the only problem with Clone Stamp is it doesn't sharpen. It definitely smooths things out unless you use a hard edge. And a hard edge brush is not something I recommend. So then I go back to dodging and burning. And here I might use a slightly harder brush. edges and I might even go to burning the shadows a little bit to really show distinctions and edges. So lots of different things to kind of bring things, bring everything together. Got this crazy creature now. Green wings, blue tail. Oh, I see what, something I can do with clone stamp. Bring a little bit of the wings into the tail. Should be nice. Remember, clone stamp is all on its own layer, too, so oh, that's not what I want.
So if your final coat of paint is too strong in some areas, it's on its own layer, you decide where to cut it down and remove it. You can do that just with opacity too. So, if I feel like I'm finished, and again, you could just work on this forever, and I don't want you to. I'm going to get rid of this little highlight at the tip of this feather. It's just going to distract me. But when you feel like you're finished, we're going to save this in a new file format. We're actually going to turn off the background. I know that looks pretty boring. But we're going to turn off the background and we're going to save it as a PNG. I'm going to show all, only the layers I want to show. Darken this claw a little. So I have only my final clone stamp, which looks like that and my final bird combined, which looks like that. And nothing else showing. I'm going to turn off the background, turn off the sketch. And now I'm going to say File, Save As, Carl Digital Assignment 2, but not as a Photoshop format, but as a PNG format. It's just like a JPEG. It doesn't support multiple layers, but it does support transparency and you, it's an online format that I can upload. So when I see it on my desktop, I want to save it to my desktop. I must have saved it to my folder instead. Yep. So save as a PNG to the desktop. <coughs> this is what we're going to upload to PhotoBucket along with our sketch and our inspiration. It's almost there. It's a big file. Come on. Now let me get my other files ready. And those are my JPEG. So let's move that to the desktop for now. And my inspiration. My inspiration were these three Pokemon, combining them together. in different ways. I have a blue tail, I have kind of a golden straw-like neck, and I've got the fiery eye. Okay, now I'm going to save it as a PSD with my gray background turned on. update it. And now I'm going to do a th another new file type, which I'm going to turn that background off and I'm going to say layer merge visible so that everything, even my clone stamp layer, is all into one. And then I'm going to delete every other layer. So I just have one transparent background with my floating creature and I'm going to save that as this new file format type which we'll call an archive format which is a TIFF and we're going to be using that TIFF on our next assignment and that's just a clean full resolution cutout like a sticker of your creature. Okay now we're going to go to photo bucket We're going to navigate to the right assignment. Here it is, assignment two in digital one. I'm going to upload using this button so it forces me to title them. And I upload three things. My inspiration, my sketch, and my final PNG. And I title them in the order